observing with the APM 20 mm 100 degree eyepiece. The Andromeda Galaxy is visible, is near the zenith. Uh, I've covered my, it's cold night, I've covered my finder scope with the hat that I have so it will not get fogged. Condensation will not form on it. What I'm observing is the two dark lanes in the Andromeda Galaxy and uh, to the left of it in this refractor re reflector telescope is a Dobsonian 300p flex tube sculpture. And what I can say is that there is also a bridge of light to the visible to the uh, Andromeda Galaxy. The core is bright, it almost dazzles the eye. I can follow the also the light of the halo of the galaxy to the top part this direction which means in the image is down, downward and for several degrees of course and now I'm going to observe this with the Teleview Delos 21mm and compare the notes okay I'm now using the Teleview uh, Ethos 21mm I guess I mentioned Delos probably but that was wrong East. Ethos. And my first impression is that first thing is that it's parafocal with the APM 20 millimeter. Second thing is that when I looked through the eyepiece, the field of view was a slightly wider magnification less so because it's one millimeter longer in focal length. The sky background was less dark, the contrast was a bit less, and uh, the rest of the things were similar. I'm surprised. Surprise, surprise, this cost three times the price of the APM and yet the view is similar. No, the APM was similar to this, I don't see much difference. Uh, I can see same details, uh, two dark lanes uh, which mark the spiral arms of the galaxy. The brightness of the core of the galaxy is same, slightly less. In the APM, it was almost dazzling. The core of the Andromeda galaxy was very bright, dazzling. This one is slightly less dazzling. And uh, I can see the same uh, two lines, two dark lanes, and uh, the halo from the M110 to the um, Gala uh, M31 was a little bit less visible, is there what is, we have to look for it. What is impressive is that the stars from the corner to the end are all are sharp and clear. In the APM, in the center, I can say around 60% of the center, 65% of, of the view is clear around the stars. The rest of it, when you get near the uh, corner, gets a little bit elongated. So uh, I think that's that's probably the lyric coma mixed up with the astigmatism. Uh, but this one is corrected, well corrected for that. I'm going to observe more and just report on the rest of the results. Okay, I'll quickly change to the APM 20mm. Uh, I can see now a lot of details in the M32 galaxy. It's funny, you can see details in that brighter core, some lanes I can see, and the halo around the M32. What is interesting is that I must correct myself about the kind of uh, uh, aberration I see. 65% uh, of the view, field of view, is in focus, and the corner slightly starts when they are near the corner. They don't have the coma or astigmatism. They are a little bit out of focus. So what, what I should call it? Uh, I don't know, field curvature probably. Oh, it's, it's a little bit slightly, not much, out of focus. The view in this one I prefer although. The view in this one is more uh, immersive than the Ethos 21, although it is three times cheaper. Let me just go remove the eye guard from the Ethos, the, which I added, and actually practically that made it a little bit less field of view on that. So I remove the eye guard and then come and see it this one. Okay now I have removed the eye guard and put the rubber eye cup back. Uh, the view is more immersive as much as the uh, the APM 20mm. Um, 
the magnification is a slightly less you can see you can notice that it's a little bit uh, less magnified and the contrast that means also is a bit less now I can say that uh, the same effect as I see on that of course less in this one the stars are a little bit tighter but uh, from up to 70 percent of the field of view sharp then when you reach 70 up to the edge is a little bit less then near the edge five percent near the edge it just uh, uh, image gets mushy the stars get a little bit you know out of focus so uh, this is slightly the image quality in that sense better uh, being everything in focus for most of the field of view slightly better than the APM 20 millimeter and uh, but uh, because of the higher magnification uh, in the APM, the contrast is better, the visibility, uh, the, the clear clarity of the view is, that's what I prefer in that one. This is also good, it's tight, everything is round, the stars are round, pinpoint, very good, and uh, yeah. I'm surprised the bridge of light I mentioned cannot be seen in any photograph. I can see it visually. Okay, again, I uh, quickly change to the APM 20 millimeter. Um, I can say that the uh, ethers 21 millimeter. I prefer the focal length of this one, 20 millimeter, means more contrast. But the uh, 21 millimeter ethers has a neater and uh, better image quality. I can say the stars are tighter and they're cleaner. This one doesn't correct. Uh, slightly coma which may exist in this uh, telescope i have not collimated it right right away but it was well collimated last night when i used it and now with the uh, ethos i can see that this really image is better more comfortable this one is more comfortable i should say <laughs> ethos is a little bit less comfortable because you know that if you get <laughs> damaged or anything you're just feeling guilty <laughs> worried but uh, it's more, you know, it's more friendly, this one, in a way, price-friendly, pocket-friendly, you can call it. Uh, if, if I want to go for a field trip and just somewhere in the field to observe, I will take this one, not the ethos. If I lose that ethos or break or something, that's a lot of money. This one is less money. Uh, but the comfort in this is better. The image in the ethos is tighter, stars are tighter, and the image quality is neater and nicer. So let me go for a max vision 24 millimeter 82 degrees IP just to compare they have similar almost close uh, image scale okay this is the max vision 82 degrees 24 millimeter IPS is equal to the export scientific um, uh, 24 millimeter 82 and also meet uh, UWA I think 5000 uh, or 4000 with the same uh, focal length and the field of view. They're equal anyway, they look even similar. Export Scientific has a little bit different uh, design on this outer part of the IPS. The rest of it is exactly the same. Uh, the image quality of this and the field of view and the neatness and tightness of the shape of the stars is very close to the ethos. I must say, this is really good. And you can see that, like the APM. The core of the Andromeda galaxy is very bright and dazzling. You can see the rest of the details, but the core is very bright. Wow! On this one, what I can confirm is that now I can see a star cloud, one of the biggest star clouds of the uh, Andromeda galaxy, in one of the arms of it, is to the side that uh, M32 is located, but the opposite side of the uh, in the lower part, if that M32 is there, that star cloud is there, and the core of the galaxy is there. And then if you go down here, that will be M110. Uh, so really impressive, and the dark lens are, will be here. Really impressive, I can see so much details with this. Arc. These are more visible, easier visible in this one. Let me just see if I can see that same detail in the ethos 21. I'm back again in the ethos 21 millimeter. Wow, I can see not only that star cluster, another 
a star cluster, I should say, a star cloud. Another star cloud also I can see, and I can see some spiral pattern in in this side. Not this side, that there are two dark lanes. On this side also I can see some dark, very finer dark lanes, which define the star clouds and the halo kind of a spiral shape. I don't know, I'm not imagining things. I'm seeing a lot more. I know that those uh, halo which connects the uh, M31 to the M110 is actually very difficult to even visible in the 17 hours of uh, you know integrated photograph uh, exposure time. But visually I can see <laughs> that that's easy. Yeah, wow. This is the closest thing to that <laughs> to that Expo Scientific. Let me use the Nagler Take 531 millimeter. Just see how it is. Definitely a halo of brightness is bridging between the M110 and M31. Offset, not exactly the core, a little bit above the core in this direction. If it is M110, the light goes like that, light bridge, in a kind of curve. It's amazing, I can see these things. No photograph can show that as clear as this. Okay, this is the Teleview Nagler 31mm Take 5. Wow, that's the image quality is this one. The field of view is bigger. I can see the extreme end of the galaxy's um, halo. And to the end. Oh, I see so much detail, my brain cannot really grasp all of that. It's only, you can catch it probably in the photograph, but there's so much detail, so much dark lanes all over the place, in the halo even. Not just two dark lanes here, all over the place. Is it because I'm familiar with the shape of it? I'm just imagining things. Or no, they're there. I can see it. And two star clouds that I mentioned are here and there. They are completely visible. Now I can see it. And the halo from the M110 to the uh, t um, above the core of the galaxy is really clear, visible. Wow. Wow, M31 is huge, very elongated. <laughs> I never saw it like that. Thanks to my good sky, actually, I can see all of that. <laughs> okay, now I put a 40 millimeter, 68 degrees field of view max vision, which is equal to the Expo Scientific and the meat of the similar specification. The image quality. The neatness and tightness of the stars is very similar to Ethos and uh, Nagler. And, uh, but because the field of view is so huge, you know, magnification is so low, the sky background actually increases uh, the brightness of the sky and you lose some detail in that. The contrast is less. Of course, you see the same details if you look for them because you know they are there. But they're not as easy as Nagler 31, which was amazing. And when you go to, down to the 24 millimeter uh, Expo Scientific again, 82 degree, amazing, beautiful. And uh, yeah, in the Ethos, um, yeah, good, but uh, I don't think that is as good as the Nagler, <laughs> in my view. Uh, yeah, I, I will just put it now, just to come back to it, just to see how I feel. Okay, now back to the 21, I can say that uh, on this target, the target which is M31, I prefer the Nagler 31 Take 5 and also Max Vision uh, Mead Explore Scientific 24mm, 82 degrees. They are more, uh, they have less magnification than this. Uh, I cannot get the whole galaxy or the parts that are visible there, they are there, you have to just uh, move the telescope to see them. And, uh, and yeah, I prefer those ones for this target, which is a very big target anyway. It's a very expansive and uh, large target in the sky, angular diameter of it is really huge. Let's just go for another target. Now I'm using again the same eyepiece, uh, Teleview Ethos 21mm, looking at the double cluster, Chi and Kappa uh, Perseus, or Chi and 
Edge Perseus, yeah. And uh, that's a double cluster. One of the double cluster parts has a series of stars which look a little bit slightly like an octopus, or you can say like the Egyptian symbol, like a tie. And uh, I can see a lot of stars in that uh, asterism. The rest of the peripheral view, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. The stars a little bit look elongated and they don't look very much tight as they should be. When you look at them, they're all right, but uh, when you look at the center, the rest of the view is, uh, is not as clear as it should be. Uh, it may be something from my eye, but that's my eye is a human eye. I suppose many people also have the same issues with their eyes. Our eyes is a little ball of uh, camera obscura <laughs> with a lens in front of it and uh, so let me just change it to um, Nagler and twin max vision 24 millimeters just to see how it is okay this is the uh, max vision 24 82 degrees equal to explore scientific and meet uh, IPC of the same focal length and field of view uh, the same problem with the peripheral elongation of this so this is a very challenging target this uh, double cluster but i can say that the numbers of the stars and the tightness and the focus of them in the ethos was better than this i'm going now to change it to the uh, nagler 31. wow none of the problems that i mentioned with the ethos and the uh, ethos 21 and the uh, max vision 2482 doesn't exist in this Peripheral vision is as clear as the center, and uh, the same tightness and neatness and numbers of the star as the Ethos 21. So this is thumbs up for this Teleview <laughs> Nagler 31. It's a good eyepiece. I must say I've never seen the double cluster so nice like this one, like in this eyepiece. Let me go and change it to the. APM 20 millimeter and then max vision 40 millimeter 68. Okay, uh, now HTC 20 millimeter again double cluster. The tightness and neatness and the roundness and the you know uniformity of the field of view and the total view of the cluster in this IPC is very similar to Nagler. The only thing is that Nagler had a bigger uh, area of the view and uh, this one had higher magnification beside that uh, yeah they are very similar and i think this one in this target double cluster is better than the ethos 21 let me just bring that again just for a moment okay i'm now in the ethos 21 millimeter just to prove that and I'm looking at the double cluster. Uh, the field of view is slightly wider than the 20 millimeter A, uh, APM, and the stars are tight. But the peripheral view has again that uh, kind of extension of the shape of the stars. Which one I prefer? I think this is equal to APM, or APM has an edge on this target to the Ethos 21. To my eye, with this telescope. Okay, now I'm looking with the max vision, uh, 24 millimeters, 68 degrees, equal to the mid of the same, uh, an expo scientific of the same uh, specification. Uh, I can say that the view is only second to the, on this target, which is double cluster, second to the Nagler 31, which is uh, 31 uh, millimeter type 5. This is a big target, of course, a very extended target, and uh, visibility of it. Uh, is best to in the, the lowest magnifications. So if I want on this target categorized, uh, Teleview Nagler 31 uh, millimeter Type 5 comes first. Second comes Max Vision, uh, uh, 40 millimeter 68 degrees. Third comes the uh, APM. Uh, uh, yeah, APM APM um, 20. I was thinking that uh, should I say the max vision 24 millimeter? Uh, anyway, max vision 2 millimeter also a little bit better or similar to the um, similar to the ethos 21, which comes the last in this target. I'm surprised by that.
<laughs> Mama said that the Magda is 31. She's a good eye priest. She's, a, she's probably the best eye priest in this range that's up in this band of field of view and magnification is that on these targets, extended targets, big targets. Back to Magda 31 on the double cluster, I must say that yeah, for color rendition and loyalty to the color, uh, this telescope, uh, this eyepiece is really good because it shows me several red stars actually. I couldn't not recognize any color in the other ones other than white or blue, probably white mostly. And in this one I can see some redness in some of the stars in this cluster, so that's really good. This is one of the best eyepieces. Let me go on the plates. Again, next Nagler 31 millimeter, and I can see that the plate is very good. Not as good as the times I use the normal Acromat refractor, and uh, but it's good. It's good. So I can see a lot of multiplicity around the stars also in this cluster. Okay, it is 21 on the plates. You can see the image quality on this one very similar to Nagler 31. Probably the stars are a little bit tighter and better than. Closer to the, you uh, know, being round, but the field of view of for the cluster, which is really huge, is a smaller, so you don't see the whole cluster. Whereby with the 31 Nagler, you could easily see. So in this one, this ETS is better. Uh, okay, the seeing has been a little bit deteriorated. There is a thin layer of haze in this gas, so the, all the details I could see back in the M31 are now invisible. M31 is yet there, but it's like a normal night. So, nothing interesting for me, so I'm packing up and going. Okay, I'm now back indoors. My assessment of the Teleview Ethos 21 is that uh, it's not the eyepiece that uh, worth uh, at the moment is 769 with the postage and everything 781 it costs almost 800 pounds you can buy a big double door fridge with that, <laughs> that money does it worth no uh, APM will do similar to this and Expo Scientific uh, 82 degrees 24 will actually equal this. Uh, a better eyepiece than this and that uh, Expo Scientific or Max Vision or Mid equal to this uh, Max Vision uh, 2482 is the Nagler, Teleview Nagler 31 millimeter. Mm -hmm. This is not a bad eyepiece, it's a good eyepiece but it doesn't worth that price. The price of it should be at, at the most one and a half times of the APM, not more. Uh, and it's quite heavy compared to that one. Definitely doesn't worth that much. <laughs> Am I going to sell it? No. I spent the night with, in very good conditions. The sky condition was really good. With these five eyepieces, underscore watcher, Skylarner flex you 300p, reflecting Dapsonian telescope uh, and I found that uh, on those three targets that I observed plates Andromeda Galaxy and the uh, double cluster in Perseus Teleview Nagler Tape 5 was the best closely matching that was the Max Vision 68 degree 40 millimeter eyepiece which is equal to mid and explore scientific of the same specification and then probably I should put this after that uh, uh, Nagler, so I put them close to here. This was really good, also surprisingly. Uh, 24 millimeter max vision, 82 degrees eyepiece, equal to mid and uh, explore scientific of the same specification and probably look in the same look with the mid. Then comes to the 100 degree eyepieces. I don't have any difficulty in seeing the field of view with the uh, no 100 degree eyepieces i'm using them all the time i have the lower magnification i have the sky watcher myriad version i have the apm and i have the ethos now ethos 21 here was used so my judgment was that ethos 21 millimeter is not the best eyepiece that it is advertised to be uh, 
in my experience and in my tar the targets that I saw and the exceptional night I spent with them, it was very closely matched by eight, um, APM HDC 20 millimeter eyepiece. And if, if I was me and I was going to spend uh, again the same money, I would go for the APM. That gives me the better view, more comfortable, and it was cheaper also. If I could find a Myriad, Scott watching Myriad 20 millimeter one, I would definitely grab that instead of this one, but it's not available. You can buy it from AliExpress in China. That one, because you can actually rest your eye on it, is like this Max Vision ones. You can actually rest your eye on it and it gives a reference point for you. Uh, Ethos is not a bad eyepiece, don't make me wrong, don't take me wrong. It's not a bad eyepiece, but uh, it's not much different to what you can uh, get with the APM or Myriad. And uh, the performance on this ones and the comfort of viewing and everything was better in this uh, series of eyepieces. Uh, so that, that comes to me the last, probably Ethos because of the uh, cost factor comes the last also. So uh, but if you want to, based on your judgment for purchasing this on this, I must say that uh, the best one is the Nagler, then there is Max Vision one and equal Expo Scientific and uh, um, uh, Mead one, 68 degree and 82 degrees are really good. These are, I don't have difficulty with the 100 degrees, but these are good, but not the best. I could have a better view with the Nagler and this other two. Just after using these eyepieces, the weather was so clear near the morning, uh, early down, that I just uh, couldn't resist. I went and uh, took this uh, giant binoculars, which is uh, 20 by 80. I bought it second hand for around 60 pounds some years ago. And I used it and I could see everything. You know, I saw M33, M31, M32, M110 satellites of the Jupiter, uh, Andromeda Galaxy. I saw the M35, M45 plates, M42. M35 is in the, of course, the Gemini. I saw the M1, which is uh, very elusive if you want to find it by the, uh, you know, just star hopping. It sometimes can be elusive easily observable with this then i realized why uh, i'm bothering uh, myself with those all these eyepieces and telescopes it's like a, a blinding myself this was an eye opener that's why i practically could use it easily then it dawned on me that this is because of all this hype they create in the uh, forums astronomy forums and it dawned on me you know i used this astronomy forums for a few months then it gradually dawned on me these people are there for a reason and that reason is to actually, uh, you know, the sell these eyepieces. Uh, First Light Optics, for example, sponsors or actually owns the uh, uh, Stargazers launch. Another company in America owns that, uh, what is it called? Uh, just uh, Cloudy Nights. So their duty there, the moderators and the people who may have several accounts even themselves, or the guys who work with them, uh, their job is like these shops. You go to Turkey or somewhere like that. They, they drag you into the shop from the street. They have to call you or know, drag you, uh, attract you to the inside of the shop so they can sell you something. Their job is like that. They make this all this hype about Takahashi, Teleview, all this expensive stuff. And they don't let you actually get the advice or the thing that you actually you have to do. And that is observation and enjoying your hobby. It makes a money pit for you that you're just all the time spending because uh, they have the better one than you. And all the time they're showing it to everyone and they're photographing it. They show, the, you know, what the postman has brought. Look at my case uh, full of eyepieces, expensive eyepieces. This is the way they trick the people to come actually spend money when actually you could do better than that with the binocular. I, I, if I also have a 750. Uh, when I was younger, I used to have 1240 uh, and I could see all the messier object with that the 1240, which was a Russian Zenit uh, uh, binocular. This one is Swedish, I think, or English or whatever. Helkinson, so it must be Swedish. And uh, I could do all of that. You know what I need with this? Just a, a, a 
a sunbed so that I can lay down in it and hold this in my hand. If I want to, you know, have a more uh, restful experience, I just use a lighter one, a smaller one, 750. And that's it. That's all that you need. All of these practically expenses of st stuff, they don't give you any more joy than using your own. Great amateur astronomers like James Alcott, uh, the guy who discovered a lot of comets, uh, all the time they were using the binoculars and they were using it inside the, <laughs> can you believe it, inside the conservatory from, from within the, looking through the sky from the, within a double glaze, from through a double glaze window glass. They were looking at it. They didn't need any of this expensive stuff. These things came since the first light optics and other things decided to, you know, push up their sales. They have accomplices in this, uh, the moderators, if you look at them. One of them actually get kicked out because he was not doing it. John Huntley, if you look in the Stargazer's launch, John uh, was one of the greatest moderators. And he stopped using actually the names of the brands. When, and then the, he was kicked up for whatever reason it was. Then he stopped using name brands, but he was active in the forum after that even, just uh, on his own. Probably he couldn't tell to his family that he has been kicked out. He is an old man, you know, he's retired. And with the disgrace, they kicked him out. And uh, he had to, you know, pretend that he's there. Um, but he stopped using the names. And he was also telling to them, look, you make all these things about Takashi and this. It's just a refractor, 80 millimeter refractor, 100 millimeter, 120 uh, aperture size refractor. They're not any better than a Dobsonian. They cannot be better. They cannot be really uh, highly better than an Acromat or a Fraunhofer telescope like this. Like this red uh, star wave. And that was it. Um, they insulted him in a very bad way over the uh, uh, mount by the Rovan Astronomy, uh, I think AZ-75. Then he was uh, suggesting that, uh, that for the test, they should actually have included uh, the, some uh, slow motion controls. Those guys were, the one of them called this two. He, he was a really a real bully and the other one is Grant. They started to actually uh, insulting him in a way. They chased him in his way. Uh, posts until really they mocked him as that oh, you're, you're poor you cannot afford these things this kind of things the behavior they do and he has to give up and i've not seen him for a while now he's not active anymore although he was a moderator in the past this is very nasty you know don't don't <laughs> don't fall into the trap of spending money a binocular serves you better <laughs> uh, this is this is my advice to you uh, by the way, the John, I mean, his real name is John Huntley. In the Scar uh, uh, Cloudy Nights American Forum, he comes with his real name, John Huntley. But in the in the Stargazer's Lounge, he was a moderator under the name John. And, uh, yeah, he has reviews of the many eyepieces, including, for example, Skywatch and Myriad, the Skywatch SWA. Look for this, you will see that he has compared the Myriad 20 millimeter with the 21 millimeter ethers, and practically thought they don't, they don't, they're not much different. <laughs> I wish I would listen to his advice, and uh, that's what everybody else also says. <laughs> practically, APM is equal to APM 20 millimeter is equal to the Skywatch Myriad in the mechanical field or anything. This is the same as the ethers, practically, just ethers wants to be, you know snobbish they make it 21 so it's standing out like 30 everybody makes 30 millimeter now 82 degree eyepieces um al nagra decided to make it 31 <laughs> so it's standing out. these are all marketing tricks john uh, yeah he's not there anymore as far as i know yeah get one of these and you will not need those all those eyepieces because the eyepiece is just one part of the thing and in here you have this eyepiece and this is gives you the Give, gave me actually the biggest field of view I could see. M33 was shining, dazzling in the telescope, even with the Nagler, it's just nothing more than a little bit fuzz. But with this, you could actually see it. And M31, M32, and M110, all this uh, that area was full of this, uh, uh, you know, the uh, deep sky objects. Unless you want to do some, uh, you know, planetary thing that you just can do it with any acromat. You can do it even cheaper with the Dobsonian. Second, five second. Huh?